chance It's the like you The odd of something happening Well, we've got a nice review of probability for you tonight. So I've tried to run through everything we covered in probability in this short video. So on that very first day of probability, we talked about tree diagrams. So let's just get one down just in case we see it on our exams and they ask you to draw a tree diagram. So it says three children are born into a family. Assume the likelihood of being born a male is the same as it is for a female. What is the probability that the three ch children born will be all girls or all boys? Draw a tree diagram or list your sample space. So basically that tree diagram starts with one little nook in the corner here and you just list out your probabilities. So I'm going to call this first child and basically the first child could either be a boy or a girl. Okay, so just B and G. Now you have a second child. Okay, so off each of these you could either be a boy or a girl. And off this one you could be a boy or a girl. Okay, and now we have that third child, so I'm going to put a third here. And off each one of these options, you could have a boy or a girl. So now your tree diagram is complete, and again, this, these right here represented first child, second child, third child. And the question says, what is the probability that all three will be girls or all three will be boys? So let's start with all three are boys. And just basically follow your line. Boy, boy, boy. That's one. Um, and then it doesn't happen again. Or you could have girl, girl, girl. So I would say that's a total of two out of. And basically you're just going to total up this last column. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Out of eight options. So two out of eight would all be boys. Um, or girls, I guess we should say. Boys or girls. And again, that's completely all boys or all girls. All right, after tree diagrams, we dove into something called permutation versus combination. Okay, so let's just get this neatly in our notebook, and I've listed a few things out to help you keep them straight. Permutation is when order matters. And we look for the three, you know, the key P words, position, placement. Okay, and probably the biggest example is your combination locker. In fact, it's very misleading because it's not a combination at all. When you turn that lock, the order matters. So it's actually a permutation lock. Okay, a combination on the other hand, order does not matter. Um, so for example, keywords to look for are committee, team, group. All right, example number one. From a club of 28 students, a president, a vice president, and a treasurer must be chosen. In how many ways can this be done if no student can serve in more than one position? Now, again, I'm just looking for keywords. Do they give me positions or placements, or are you picking a group, team, or committee? Well, to me, president is a position, vice president, and treasure are all positions. So I'm going to use a permutation here. Now, I just want to remind you, the total goes out front, and how many you want to happen is your second number. So I'm going to say there's a total of 28 P for permutation, and I'm only looking for three of them, president, vice president, and treasurer. And basically, I would just type this in my calculator. Um, again, a quick refresher, you would start with the 28, math, probability, get, would get your, your NPR, and then type in the three. And I'm going to skip that part because, again, I'm assuming you can do that on your own. Let's take a look at another example. License plates in a certain state consist of six characters, each of which could be a letter or a digit. If any of the 10 digits or 26 letters can be chosen, determine how many license plates can be created if the following criteria happens. Okay, the first four characters must be letters. So what I do is I draw out four lines, and then I'll just make a note to myself, these are letters. And the last two, because we had a total six, have to be digits. I'm going to put a D there for digits. Let's see, repetition is allowed for numbers, but not letters. Okay, so you can repeat the numbers, but not the letters. Now, they were pretty generous and told you there's 26 letters in the alphabet. Again, that's something you should know. And they told us 10 digits. Now, most people remember 1 through 9, and they like to say 9 digits, but don't forget you have a 0, and that's where the 10 digits come from. All right, now this is pretty simple. The letters cannot repeat. So there are 26 letters to choose from for the first one. Now let's say you use the letter M. 
How many letters do you now have to choose from? Well, if you can't repeat, you've got 25, and then 24, and then 23, because you cannot repeat, and there are time signs between those. Um, now, when we talk about the digits, or the numbers, repetitions allowed. So you have 10 digits here, you use one, but you're allowed to use the same one. So I'm gonna do times 10 again. And again, I would just carefully type that in my calculator to get my answer. All right, one last one here. A florist is creating um, bouquets of red, yellow, and white roses. If there are five red roses, four yellow roses, and eight white roses to choose from, how many different arrangements can the florist make using two of each color? All right, so basically you have to collect two of each color. Do you have a position or a placement? Okay, are they talking first place, second place, third place, or president, vice president? No, you're just picking a group of roses. Okay, so I would say this is definitely a combination, not a permutation. Now, it says you're gonna pick two of each color. So let's start with the red roses. Okay, out of the red roses, there's a total of five, and I'm gonna choose two. Out of the yellow roses, there is a total of four, and I'm going to choose two. And out of the white roses, there's a total of eight, and I'm going to choose two. Now the question is, do you add these or do you multiply these? All right, so again, let's make a little note here. If we say and, we're going to multiply, and if we say or, we're going to add. Now, I didn't necessarily see and, or, or, but let's use some common sense. You need two of each color. That means you need two red and two yellow and two white. Notice I'm saying the and word, so I'm going to put multiplication between those. And again, at this point, plug and chug on your calculator, and I'm going to assume we can all do that fairly easily. Now, let's get the next little note in there. We haven't actually talked about too much probability. We've talked about combinations, basically. Okay, well, here's where it switches a little. Here's the definition of probability. It's the event that something happens over the total number of outcomes. So again, let's put the number of outcomes on top divided by the total being the keyword there. Okay, the number of outcomes over the total. Now, look how carefully this sentence gets tweaked um, and what changes here. A florist wants to make an arrangement of five flowers so that he will pick from a collection of 14 red roses and 10 white roses. Which of the following calculates the probability, notice this word's now involved, that was not involved in our previous questions, the probability if the flowers are chosen at random, and the arrangement needs to contain three red and two white. All right, so there's a lot to take in here. So let's start with our red roses. We need three red, and there's a total of 14. Okay, and again, you're not naming positions or places, you're just picking a group of roses. So I'm going to say 14 C. Three. Now I need two white roses, and there was a total of 10 C2. Now let's get that key word between there. All right, we pointed to it. That and again means to multiply. Now a lot of people want to stop there and be done with it, but you don't actually have a probability at the moment. Okay, we don't have probability until we have a fraction. The total number we want over the number of outcomes. So I'm gonna have to say divided by, and basically I'm just gonna get the total number of flowers. All in all, I have 14 red and 10 white, that's a total of 24 roses, and I wanna pick a total of five. Okay, so again, basically I said I have 14 and 10, which get me that 24, and I'm gonna choose three and two, which get me that five. Okay, so now I have a probability, and every time you see that word probability, make sure your answer is a fraction. All right, I'm going to switch gears. This also fell in our probability section. So just that determine the number of different arrangements that can be made from the following words. So we've got a nice bow wow here. So hopefully you remember, and this is always everyone really usually enjoys this question. Again, probability is how many, you know, you want divided by the, the total here. So bow wow has six letters. And remember, you have to divide anybody that repeats. We're going to take out anybody that repeats. So I see three W's, so that's a three factorial. And I see two O's, so times two factorial. Now most people do that pretty easily, and here's where the mistake comes in. 
If you have that nice updated calculator and you know who you are, use the math uh, alpha y equals button and you've got the fraction tool. All right, those of you with that old TI-83 calculator, my biggest suggestion is to type the top in, type the bottom, write those two numbers down, and then divide them. All right, we don't want to miss an easy question because we're lazy. Um, the other way to avoid that, if you have the old TI-83 calculator, and again, I would just, you know, use parentheses around the top, parentheses around the bottom, would also be a way to avoid that. All right, and then in probability, we basically have one last question left. It's the exactly, at least, and at most question. Okay, and this is probably the most common on our trig exam. So Harold, ro Harold rolled a standard die four times and recorded the result each time. Determine the probability um, in reduced fraction form that he rolled the following. So part A says you want two sixes in four rolls. All right, now I might have gotten a little ahead of myself. Let me slow down and just kind of talk about this formula. Okay, the formula is NCR, the probability of a success to the R, and the probability of a failure to the N minus R. Okay, the biggest thing I can say to you um, to keep these straight is box in the success term. Okay, the number before the success and the exponent are both the same number. Okay, star that, make a note to yourself. We can't screw up the exponents. This is typically an easy question. This is not on our formula sheet either. Okay, so you've got to understand the number before and the number right up in the exponent, those are the same on your success. All right, so now that we have a formula, again, I just want to be clear, the total number is your n, how many you want to happen is your r. So how many total times are you going to roll the die? Okay, so it says you're going to roll four times, so 4c. Now how many do you want to happen? Out of the four times you roll the die, you want exactly how many of them? Two of them. Okay, so out of the four times I roll the die, there it goes there, I need exactly two. Now what do you need? What is a success in this problem? Okay, what would make Harold happy? What does he want to see? Well, he wants to see the number six. Okay, so how many ways can Harold roll a six? Well, on a die, there is one six out of the six sides. Okay, now I say to myself, if this number is a two, then this number is a two. And if I happen one out of six times, that means I must fail five out of six times. And then to get this number, I just take these two numbers and subtract. All right, and when it says exactly, I'm basically just gonna take care of this once, type it in my calculator all in one line, hit math frac, and I've got my answer. But I can't stress enough. Total, want, and then whatever they're talking about that's a success goes here. All right, let's try another one. This time it says, at most, two sixes out of four rolls. All right, so again, total, C, want. Okay, I'm going to roll this die a total of four times, and I want how many of them? At most, two. Now, what is the question about? A success, and just make a note, just put an S to yourself. A success in this case is actually getting a six. So you say, how many ways can you get a six? Well, again, one out of six. Raised to the second, therefore five out of six. Subtract those two numbers, and you get the second again. However, we're not done because it said the word at most. Make sure, make sure, make sure you put a big fat plus sign. Okay? Now, don't overthink this. It says the most you can get is two. If the most you can get is two, what else could you get? Okay, two is the most. It is the absolute highest. So you could get a one. You could get one six. All right, so that's probabilities are still the same. It's just this exponent that's going to change to the first, because these two have to match, and then five out of six to the third. Okay, plus, all right, so the most was two, I could get one, or in fact, I could get none. So four C zero, one six, again, they're gonna be the same on each side to the six, and five six to the fourth. Things to make sure you catch, watch those plus signs between them. Type each one in, Add them together and get your final answer. All right, C is our last one. 
This time, notice it says, I need at least two sixes out of four rolls. All right, so think about what the word at least means. Two is the least amount you can have. And we're going to leave it there for you. We'll check that one in class tomorrow. So we're looking for a perfect setup and answer on at least two sixes. Well, that really does it on probability for us. Um, you know, take your time. If you're truly still stuck on probability, go ahead and find it in our list of videos and rewatch it again. We'll see you in class tomorrow. Have a great night.